Hi, this is Eric with programwitheric.com. I just give you a quick tips to remote programming. So what I mean by that is let's say you have a server and it has SSH installed on it and you need to get some work done. So right now I have a DigitalOcean instance and I'm SSH into the server right now and I have all my tools installed. So I went ahead and before I started here I created a service test folder and in this folder is just a default Ember app. So I'm going to go ahead and start the server with the Ember server command. And you'll notice that it, it, it goes ahead and it serves the website up on localhost 49152 and 40 for the live reload and the server on 4200. And of course this is just for testing purposes. So a couple ways I can access this, since this is a, I'm on a Windows box now and I'm SSH'd into the server, so if I wanted to check this website and take a look at it, I can do it a couple ways. Uh, one way is I can open up 4200 and 49152 on this box and then just type that into the address bar and, and, and look at the site. But one easier way of doing that is port forwarding. So if I look at the settings here, and this is PuTTY, and I'll bring this over here. You can see that I already have 4200 and 49152 set up. So what this tells me that I'm doing is I'm taking the port 4200 on the remote server and I'm mapping that to 4200 on the local box. So when I access localhost 4200, it'll actually be access accessing the 4200 that's on port 4200 on the remote server. The same thing for 49152. And to add that into PuTTY, it's pretty easy. You just, through source port, you put 4200 and the destination port, localhost 4200. So we should be able to take a look at it. So if we look at here, I already have it up. So I'm port forwarding, I got my localhost 4200, and welcome to Ember services showing up. Now, let's say I want to go and make changes to it. Uh, one way, one program I like to use when I'm running Ubuntu and my Linux is Screen. So I can hit Control A, N, Control A, C. That creates a new terminal. And if you look at Screen, I just apt get Screen, and it's a full screen window manager that multiplexes a physical terminal between several processes. Processes. So what that means is that I can create multiple screens and I can move between them in my terminal. So I can do Control A next and that'll go back to the screen I was just at and Control A P to go back to the previous screen. So I, now I can go back to the directory I was just at. And I'll go ahead and open up my favorite editor, Vim. And I'll open up the directory listing here. And I'll go back to my templates. And let's say I wanted to change this to Welcome to Ember test. I can save that. And now if I look at my window, it's already updated. It was really quick. But let's say I go test 2. Save it. And you can see it auto reloads because the live reload is working correctly. So that was really simple. Now I can do that. Now I can make changes on my server and have a little window here to always see what's happening. So that's really useful. Uh, one other quick tip which you could do is if let's say you really like Atom and you had Atom installed you I installed a plugin called Remote Atom you can see it here this Remote Atom uh, it's just a package you can install and then you install something called Rmate and you rename it to Rmatom and you can as long as you have 52698 port forwarded correctly, it'll connect to the server and display the file for you. So this dash R is a, a way to do port forwarding for the remote. So what this does is it takes the 52698 on the remote system and it maps it to 5269, uh, excuse me, the other way around. It takes 52698 on the local system and it maps it to your remote system at 52698. And what that means is that your remote system is going to connect to its port 52698, which is really your 52698. It's a little confusing, but what you can do, I already have it installed. So let's say I wanted to rAdam this readme file. 
You can see now it went ahead and opened up an atom. I can make changes to it. You will need to install this on your computer, please. You can save it. If we go back here, cat my readme. And we'll just go into it, it might be easier. See, there's the please. So I went ahead and added it to it. Of course, there's some downsides of this because when you're using this, you only can do one file. You can do multiple files at a time, but you don't, can't see the directory structure. So that's a problem. But it's for something quick and simple, or if you really like Adam, this is a really interesting way of doing it. And the way I did this, I had to if you go back to the settings I was at before. In the putty configurations, you can see I have R52698, so I just hit remote here. So that way it was mapping it from my system to the remote system, like this. So that's about it. So this is just a few quick and simple tips you can use to remotely work on your server and be able to be productive. Thanks.